Bagara barrels for guaranteed accuracy, nitride for guaranteed rust proofing, and a rifle guaranteed to be the best muzzle loader you've ever shot. CVA, it's just a better gun. All right, guys, it's time to do this week's tip of the week. It's being sponsored by the Tennessee Outdoor Rendezvous and Deer Expo. That's May the 21st and 22nd coming up this year. Y'all can get information at tndeerexpo.com or give my buddy Wes Stone a call at 615-444-8200. He can get you all your information for tickets or bringing your deer to the event. Or if you're an exhibitor that's looking for a booth space, give him a call and he can take care of you. All right, guys, we're going to go over here to Miss Living. She's got a tip for us this week. So what's our tip this week? Call out over the hens. Okay, so when those hens are, like you heard a while ago, we were in the woods, and those hens are squawking and calling, you want to get louder than the hens and be louder than them, kind of be, uh, harass the hens, I guess, so to speak. And it, it gets them fired up, doesn't it? And it, that little hen will come to you because she does not like you being louder than her. And she does not like you mimicking what she does. Nope. And and it, it it seems so funny, but I mean that. If she yelp, 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 and you follow that with exactly the same thing, yelp, 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 and keep doing that, it works. But that's a great tip. You'll be louder than those hens. And uh, it's worked out for you pretty well now, hasn't it? So you got your first one, I guess, when you were eight years old, you said. It's when you, you were getting started. And you're 13 now. You're tagging out every year. Uh, it seems like to me and also uh, we were just talking about the Tennessee Outdoor Expo and the deer show he had a couple of nice bucks in that deer yeah. show last year too yeah. so we might have to come and back and talk some brought home two planks some, some deer right. later but two first uh, place nice planks. that's right guys if y'all want to call in I'll go ahead and open up the phone lines you can call in 615-737-7767 and as we're moving forward now I want to be talking about um, Bob again we got 80s Temperatures are going to be getting up in the 80s. Grass is coming up in our hay fields, wherever we're hunting. Our pastures are getting taller. Our woods are getting thicker. But most importantly for the turkey hunter, our hens will soon be heading to nest. So what can we look at some major changes over the next couple weeks as we move into the end of the season? But how will you kind of change some of the ways that you'll approach them? I think they're going to be more in the fields. They seem like they've been in the woods mm -hmm. the first couple of weeks. Bugs warming up bugs grasshoppers stuff like that they're going to be out in the fields more keen yeah. in on them lonely yeah easier to call they are man they're easier to call when those hens go to nest they really are it makes a big difference when, um, it, get, when it gets up to 80 though you'll see them at the edge of the field in the shade and big black birds they get they get hot and they get hard to see in mm -hmm. that shady spot when you yep. come up to a field you better check those shady spots twice with your binoculars before you walk mm -hmm. out there they get tough to see but you know i can imagine i've always figured and you said they get hot they have to yep. i mean you know mm -hmm. standing out in the field oh, yeah. 85 degree temperature with with all those black feathers on them they would have to get hot so what about the population of the birds what do y'all think in my neck of the woods it's way down yeah it's it's in down. smith county it's I, way I down i feel like most of I'm not speaking for everybody, but I can speak for most of the people I know would agree that in Middle Tennessee, in general, they're down. Now, you might ask, well, why are y'all hunting them? Because there's still, I'm not saying there's not enough of them. There's, there's a lot of turkeys out there, but by all I talked earlier, if you go back 10 years, it's a big difference. Yeah. 10 years ago, you could kill four birds off a farm and not worry about it. Yeah. Now, you might kill one, you better leave it alone. Yeah, right. Yeah, and we do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. once we get to a, uh, one farm, we might allow, all right, we'll take two birds on this farm. Once we get them, we're shutting the gate, yeah. you know, and we'll try something else. Um, and, and we have a lot of little places, too. I, I don't, couldn't tell you how many times I hear, well, them guys got a 1,000 acres here. And, no, we're usually hunting, honestly, 25 acres, 45 right. acres, 60 acres. Uh, but what we do is, is, like you're saying, Bob, we'll switch around on them. If I've killed a bird off such, such 60 acres or two birds, whatever, depending on how many birds are there, that's it. We're done, you know, until next year, and I think that helps a lot. But I do think Dayton overall, it's down. Yeah. Uh, in general, it's and down. And I mean, there's a big deal of, as far as building going on, and a lot of habitats going away, man. You do. You got a lot, lots of habitat. A lot of the farms. Water are, erosion is, yeah. is way worse, you know, due to building and things. Yeah. So I, I think that has a lot to, to do with it. The farming practices have changed. Yeah. There's no fence rows. Mm -mm. And no tall grain crops you know you don't really have much of that around our areas and when they spray what that spray land on them bugs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the hen comes along poults 
pick it up. Yeah. What's that doing to them? Right. Ain't yeah. doing them no favors, mm -hmm. I guarantee you. No, I mean, it's not natural for them. You mm -hmm. know, uh, if, if nothing else, it's not natural for them. But it's, uh, it is something for us to keep in mind, you know, as we're as we're in the future. And there's a lot of things going on. They're studying that right now and uh, a lot of university studies. I uh, saw a guy the other day, and it's not the first one I saw, but the other day I saw where a, a banded turkey had been shot in, in one of our, I think it was in one of the southern Tennessee areas that had just opened up last mm -hmm. weekend. Uh, but there's there are numerous studies going on, but uh, not that there's not huntable populations. There are. There, there are plenty of birds out there uh, where you can find them, but you might have a farm that you had them on 10 years ago that all of a sudden now you don't have them on at all, and we right. have experienced that several times. There some, they think in genetic diversity is causing some of the die off when they yeah. get inbred mm -hmm. or whatever. The eggs are not as fertile. The poults when they hatched are not as vigorous and just yeah, numerous reasons. Just numerous I mean, you know, reasons it's, down it's, it's a laundry list. Predators, you know, there's a lot of predators, owls, hawks. When you got something hunting you 365. Yeah. Everything likes turkeys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dad and I were we were hunting yesterday afternoon, and he said, "You know, the old turkeys they're they're pretty smart." I said, "Well, I said they are." I said, "But really, they're they're scared. They're just scared." Yeah. They, imagine, like you said, any time they're not in that tree, and even in the tree, but especially when they're not in that tree, they could get got at any minute, all day long, and they spend all day. Not, you know, not necessarily scared, but on eggshells all day. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, you walk up and bump a deer, he might run out 40, 50 yards and look back and see what bumped him. That ain't happening with a turkey. No. If you, mm -hmm. you know, he's you gone. Back younger, he's gone. He's gone. I mean, you, you might be able to get back on him later, you know, but he's he is not going to turn around and see what just scared him because mm -hmm. they're so much more susceptible to predators, especially in the poult stages, uh, than a lot of other animals are. I mean, you got two to three weeks there that a poult can't fly and get up in a tree. And it, right. just, so just imagine a chicken walking around through the woods, can't get up in the woods. It's a... And, and then the owls, I mean, and it's the a owls tough pick them out of the trees at night. Too. They can, I and mean, they, they do. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they take them up. They can, and they yeah. do. So I think that's a that's a big factor there. But uh, tell me this, guys, will you change anything about your your setup, your initial setups or tactics coming up over the next few weeks? I mean, do you think they'll change their roosting habits at all? I, I know they'll change their feeding habits, and you hit on that a little bit. They will come to fields more. Uh, so do you think you will initially start off daylight now on a field rather than in the woods? Probably right on the right on the edge. It seems like they've been roosting in thickets, yeah, in cedar thickets there at the house. I don't know if that's from the weather, trying to maybe get the wind maybe off get or more the thermal, or something. You know, thermals. Or this time of year, last year they was roosting in hardwoods, pitching right out into the yeah. into the fields. Now they're roosting in a cedar thicket and hitting the ground and milling around in there all yeah. day. It's really it really has seemed to be a lot different this year. Like I mentioned, the the hunt that we were on a while ago, we were in the woods, uh, but that particular little farm there is, is just has the little bit of woods compared to all the fields that it has. But the turkeys have been staying in those little patches of woods. And when they've been in the field, it's been coming from one patch of woods to another. You know, they've been just coming across, through. you know, strutting, doing their thing a little bit mm -hmm. and coming on across. But uh, that'll that'll start to change. They're going to get in the edge of these fields, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of fun then. If, I think if the weather will ever level out and stay the same a few days, that they'll get to acting more like turkeys. They've not been very vocal. When it's yeah. 35 degrees and the wind right. blowing yeah. 15 mile an hour. Yeah, yeah, and 15's putting it lightly. That's yeah. a good day this yeah. spring. Yeah. Day. <laughs> That's a real good day this spring, 15 miles an hour is. Um, well, tell me this, Libby, you're tagged out. What are you going to go call for Bob now? What are you going to do now? Yep. He says, yeah. I might call for him a little bit. I'll still go with him because it's just fun to go out and sit in the woods and watch people kill turkeys. It is. It's a lot of fun to call him for other people. I was a prime example of that. Mm -hmm. You say you had watched seven this year, I think. Yep. Uh, you've called in seven that have been shot, and you have not shot any of them. No, not so. so uh, I've carried a gun two times, Well, two days. That's because you spend all your time getting these kids out in the woods and taking them. Helping, and and first off, just to tell you how much we appreciate yes. that, uh, in general, anybody that takes their time to get kids out, and and you were a prime example. I mean, you got started young. You, I heard your brother got a deer, and you didn't like that too much. You was ready to get your own, so it started out with deer hunting, I guess, and just kind of you've been going with it ever since, I guess. Yeah. Huh? 
you'll never see no more kids that's no more competitive than their, their <laughs> brother and sister. Older brother can't outdo her, can he? Uh, I tell you what, he better have killed some really good deer if he's outdone you on those deer. I know that he's, one. He's still got him beat on the deer for now. Still leading the race, huh? Mm. 176 inch 12 pointer. He's leading me. <laughs> <laughs> and me. And, and just me. about anybody mm. I know with she, a 176 inch deer. She killed a, a 10 point with a drop time and the taxidermist said, Girl, said you killed a 176. I've never done that. Nope. Said now you killed a drop down buck. I've never I've killed never one. Never done either said, one myself. Yeah, so never done mm, either one myself. Nice I ones. have, I have shot a I've seen trailer them. loaded deer, and I've never I've shot seen either them. one. Yeah, yeah, they're around, but you've, you know, you've had a great start, and now you, I'm hoping to see you, as you get older, you'll start passing this on to other ones. I've got uh, one of my little ones in here with me tonight, and a lot of times those, that age group looks up to your age group a lot more, you know, so on and so forth. But uh, it's excellent to see you guys getting out and doing like you're doing. Now, I, I look, I think you'll probably, I'm probably going to see you tag out in the next few weeks, I feel like. I think you'll get after them and, yeah. and uh, you know, um, make it happen. We're going to work on her calling a little bit, and I'm sure she's going to yeah. call me one right into the... Right. right into the setup. Well, you can't beat that. Uh, to hit on something else real fast that you mentioned that I want to talk about, uh, you said there was a, a particular area, in your case, it was a ridge line that came down, and there was one flat area on that hillside, and that one flat area, for a long time now, you've consistently gotten birds there. Just a, a natural strut zone. They like to, they can be seen from there, they can see. And it's just, if it ain't broke, if it ain't broke it don't is. fix it. And, and well, the reason I wanted to mention that is a lot of times there are historical places that over the years, and we've had some of those, over, you know, in time too, that if they were there last year strutting and they were there five years ago strutting and, they're, you know, they were there ten years ago strutting and they'll be there this year same in way the same deer. area. Mm -hmm. They say the same thing about a big deer. Right. Unless you've changed something mm -hmm. about them, Many times you'll have an area like Bob's talking about that you can go back to year in and year out, you know, and be able to find birds consistently in those mm -hmm. areas. And a nice flat strut zone in a series of hills or something like that is a great way to do that. Uh, if you get them in the fields, like so we have to hunt a lot of times, they'll be right in the dead center of that field. And it's tough. It makes it, a, it's a tough go to get to a turkey that's 300 yards in the middle of a field. So a strut zone like that in the, mm -hmm. in the woods is a lot better approach as the hunter to get in there and, and get after them too. So that's always a big time. No, no doubt about it. So, um, well, as we, as we get going in the next few weeks, I'll, I'll, I guess one other thing I'll ask, as our as our as our fields start getting taller, the last thing I'll ask is, when they're getting taller, do you feel like the birds will quit going to a field once the grass gets up higher? Do you have to go back to the woods at that point? I think so. Or cattle pastures where they've been grazed a little bit, mm -hmm. but they don't like walking in that wet early morning wet tall grass. They don't. Yeah. They don't like. It. They that's don't like that's it. right. I just that's the last thing I wanted to hit. Just real quick is that if your pastures start getting too high and you're not able to cut them or anything, get back with those woods. They don't really like that tall grass as much. I'm not saying they won't walk through it, but they don't care for it. So, well, guys, we're going to have to get ready to take another break. We want to thank our friends right now over at Soul Shine Pizza. And they are at 4021 Hughes Crossing, Suite 101 in Franklin, Tennessee. You can give them a call at 615-379-7767. Let them take care of your catering needs as well. You can call my buddy Steve Brandon. Go down there and see him. They have lunch specials Monday through Friday, 11 to 2. They'll be glad to see you. All right, guys, we're going to take another quick break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 